It's 2018 and this is Super GT. We're here for the Okayama round one, the opening race. I'm Sam Collins and I'm here with Rob Barth. 300 kilometers today around Okayama. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait. The red lights are on and we are about to go racing on Nismo TV for the first time in 2018. This is Super GT and the lights go green and already the Raybrick NSX driven by Jensen Button gets a good run. Big puffs of smoke out the back of one of the Lexus cars there but into second position goes the Forum Engineering and into third goes number 23 the red car Nissan GTRs and up almost into the lead round the outside there that's brilliant. number 23. Absolutely brilliant move from Kintarelli round the outside oh, awesome as we uh, look into the split screen now the GT300s make their start but Marco Mapelli started on pole in the Lamborghini on the left hand side there and Going back to the battle for the GT 500s. I don't know where to look, Sam. You you watch the GT 500s. So I'm watching the GT 300s. But that is the number 23 car, the the red car, the red Nismo, having a fantastic attempt to get into the lead round the outside of that Honda, and he's got a tail gunner. While in GT 3, it's Audi versus Lamborghini versus the Gainer GT 3 GTR for the top three in GT 300. But it's like the M25 coming into Dartford Tolls on a Friday night. There's cars all over the road in GT 3, and this is what I thought. Those Michelin Land tyres have come into their own in these cold temperatures straight away. He's trying to go round the outside there. Yasuda really wants this Lamborghini, but the number 25 Hoppy sponsored GT86 really wants the back of Yasuda as well. Here we go, three for the lead as they come down the back straight, heading down round the little left hand kink, coming down to turn five. And the Nissan's position beautifully on the inside. If he holds the line here, is the Hoppy um, GT86 going to follow him through? No, so Nissan takes the lead ahead of the Lamborghini with the Hoppy. Uh, smaller car tucking in behind. There's GT300s passing each other as the GT500s come through the field. This is just bonkers as they make their way out of Atwood Corner, turn four, up onto the back straight. The longer uh, straights give the GT500 cars a chance to stretch their legs and cut past the GT300s, but just look how closely they're battling. Wow. And that orange BMW, remember, is a GT300 car. That is the, and we would say GT300, GT300 in the case of that BMW, which nearly runs Nick Cassidy off the track there, is a... Uh, and actually does, it does run. run it off the track. That's our championship winner from last year, Nick Cassidy there being run completely off the road there. But look at that battle between the Zensa Rumo Lexus and the Raybrig NSX. That's Jensen Button, but he's defending the Wed Sport LC500 Lexus and GT500 as well. And they are swapping positions as they go through this traffic like crazy. Well, the big difference is the GT500 is a hell of a lot faster. Nearly 700 brake horsepower, or hot, depending on who you listen to, maybe even 700 brake horsepower. And they are a lot faster than the GT3, but it, GT300 cars. The biggest difference, though, as you say, Rob, is the headlights. You can tell them the white headlights means it's really fast, and the yellow headlights are not so fast. Oh, <laughs> Jensen Button's going to be absolutely loving this. This is just what a racing driver lives for. Racing, dicing for position, cutting through traffic. This is what he's missed in Formula 1. He's left the door wide and open, he's just though. missed it. he's just missed the position. And Jan Mardenborough now right on the tail of Jensen Button, but trying to get around the outside of a back marker and over take Jensen Button in one move. Even the Welshman can't do that. Exceptional amount of traffic. Now, trying to call who's passing who in GT300 as the GT500s are battling is very difficult indeed. But here's a battle for the lead in GT300. The Hoppy 86 is now alongside the Gainer Tanax GTR and We're hasn't quite see. got it. Go and here is the battle for first, second and third in GT500. And those Michelin tyres now coming into their own. If Kagure doesn't if Kagure holds off Rene Quintarelli for much longer, as we've got battles in both classes, that's why we've gone to the split screen. This is unusual in Super GT that we have both lead battles going on at the same time. Flashing his lights like crazy there in the KN NSX, but yeah. round the outside of that Toyota, that Lexus is a... Oh no, he lost a bit of time there in number yeah. 23, but these Michelin tyres on the two Nissan GTR GT500 really working very well indeed. A change of lead in GT300 as they come down into turn 11. Richard Lyons moves up past the Nissan in the Audi to take the lead. Well, there's a huge accident. It is Bumblebee has hit the wall. The run-up GT3 GTR, that's the old specification, has had a really hard front end hit into the wall. Not quite sure how that happened. Let's see. The NSX, oh, that's a terrible. Is that the car guy NSX, number 34? 
just goes straight into the back of the GTR GT3 GT300, hard into the wall. Yeah, hard. And, uh, into that was just he just outbraked himself, didn't he? The NSX. But somebody who is not going to be happy is Ronnie Kinterelli, who's got a drive-through penalty. Yeah, he's now gone from P2 to last. No, there's the form there engineering car. Oh, beg your pardon. So no, he's almost last. And uh, the number 23 got a penalty for a jump start. That's a bit harsh. On lap 28. Yeah. yeah. Now look at this. It's the battle for the lead overall in GT500. And it's gone down from 2.3 seconds as the Lotus didn't see the K in an exit coming through. Oh, now this is naughty. This is naughty. This is extremely <laughs> naughty. That is the number 30. Oh, oh that's the pair of They've damaged him. He's damaged him. That is a definite driving moral hazard. And look, he waited. He's waited for the R8 to come up, and he's deliberately blocked him and yeah. let his teammate through. And it's a... Oh, it's a, now the R8 there is a meat in a three sandwich. There's too much damage on the Prius. You can see the damage on the right front. Well, he's done his radiator. You can see the damage right on the right front. So uh, that help from the number 30 has hindered their teammate. Oh, there's going to be some brilliant conversations in the pit lane after this one. As the NSX is run side by side at the hairpin at turn five. And they hit each other. And there is more trouble for wonky sticker number 21 Audi R8. Tomita is not having a good time of it. Wonky rear bumper now as well. So I think that contact earlier with the Prius has damaged something that's now becoming terminal. Karma. So what happens when you don't put a straight sticker on a car? It doesn't sound uh, like it's got gears, does it? Yeah, it sounds it looks, like he's got his, he's he can't get it drive. into gear, yeah. I think that there's been something wrong with the upright. That was manifested by a wheel speed sensor issue, and now yeah. the drive shelf's broken. It's GTR, GTR, and GTR. There you go. They, should almost, they can almost line up for the show photo. Oh, nearly got into the, the, the hoppy car, nearly got it back into the number three, and that's nearly gave the up garage car a run at the hoppy car as we see the GT86 is now side by side. This is for the lead in GT300, and that was a very good move from the up garage car. Brilliant. Going defensive into the corner, that was some smart driving there. This is the number 23, driven by Sugio Matsuda there, is on the tail of Izawa-san. Wonderful bit of racing there. So, Matsuda down the inside and upper position, and He's come from almost the back of the field, back up to fifth. You've got to, you've got to think where would he have been if they hadn't got that unsporting penalty for a jump start? And is that trouble for the 17, or was it just a funny up? angle? No, no, it's damage. There's big damage on the front of the race leader. Well, how's he got that? Now, is that from his car? Is it a dive plane? It looks like a dive plane. Is the number three having oh pretty heavy contact there with the Zentsurumo. Oh big ah now that is okay. where. So that's where the big lumps of carbon came. Well, from. he's got his own big lumps of carbon hanging up now. Was ah now was that before or after? Now the Zentsurumo is shedding bits of bodywork around the track. Look, there is he's got his own little spikes sticking out of it as well. Kahin NSX, followed by the Raybrick 100 NSX. The Kahin NSX has damage on the front. They're excited. He seems less excited. He seems really excited. And here is the final corner. Kahin NSX wins the Okuyama Super GT race. Round one goes to Kahin. One, two for Honda. Three, four for Lexus. It was nearly a change of position there on the line. Very close, wasn't it? Yeah, very close indeed. There's Fifth our... position for the new spec Nissan GTR GT3 and GT300, but here's the battle for, well, not the battle, the, here is the leader in GT300, the up garage GT86 for the Motul Autec GTR as the GT300 up garage 86 crosses the line to winning GT300. And there is your race result, Kahin NSX GT winning the race from the Raybrick NSX driven by Yamamoto and Jensen Button, Keeper Tom's LC500, the last year's champions in third.
and you can see the rest. First of the Nissans in fifth position, the Motor Lawtech GTR, 36 seconds off. Now, had he not got that penalty, drive through penalty, that, you know, yeah. his Motor Lawtech, completely unfair penalty. The 24 Forum Engineering Advan GTR was 48 seconds off in sixth position, and the Craft Sports, driven by the new team for the Super GT season, was just over a minute off the lead in seventh. Now, that drive through penalty was, I, I'm completely against, so. That wasn't great. Terrible race for the number fifth for the 64 car, the Epson NSX GT, driven by Bertie Baguette in uh, Matsuura-san. I don't know why that car was so slow. We didn't really nope. see much of it, other than being it being lapped. In GT300, as we've just seen, the upgarage GT86 was the overall victor from the D-Station Porsche. The hoppy GT86 managed to cling on for third position ahead of the Leon AMG GT. First of the new specification Nissan GTR GT3s was the Gainer Tanax number 11 car driven by Hironaka and Yasuda. They were a lap down on the timing of scoring, but in reality, that's not a reflection of how the car performed on track. I think you'll see a lot more from that as the season progresses. Put them down as a championship contender. Oh, look, look at this! Golf clubs! Amazing! Golf, golf clubs, ladies and gentlemen. This is the best rice ever! And it's, it's not a barrel of rice. It's not wood. It's a set of clubs. <laughs> you, oh, and the crowd go wild. I thought, but only one set. Well, it's two driver race. Do have to share them? Do have to share them? No, he's just going to give them straight to his dad. He's going to be, oh my God. Dad's going to be delighted. <laughs> we win golf, golf clubs. That is um, spectacular. <laughs> he's happy. He's, he's failed to open. Oh, he's been, he's been learning from Nick Cassidy. And now he's open. He's just gone oh. for a very, very late spray. He's going to have a drink. Here we go then. All eyes on Nick Cassidy on the right hand side. He's giving oh, it he's, a he's, right he's, 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 he's giving it. He's, 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 oh, oh he's too soon. He's gone, he's off gone too, too soon. soon. He was premature again. <laughs> Thanks for being here on Nismo TV. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we'll be back with more great motorsport action.